Hi, uh, today I will be introducing Firebird uh, database management system just like Access SQL Server MySQL. And we will be going to use Firebird with uh, .NET and C Sharp or VB.NET or what, any uh, .NET compliant language. So the first question is why you want to use Firebird instead of Access or SQL Server. First of all, uh, Firebird is free of cost. You don't need to, it's open source and you don't need to pay anything for Firebird. You don't need to purchase a license. Moreover, it's uh, portable. It's usable on Unix, Linux, Windows, Mac, whatever operating system you have. Third and most important thing is that Firebird is a multi-user database management system multiple users can access the database at the same time and you can set up a Firebird server very easily like it's remotely accessible the main reason why I am using Firebird is that I want or I need uh, remote access and multi-user options so I'll be using Firebird so Firebird is pretty easy to install and it's really simple so let's go and install it Let's go to the Google page and uh, write fire, Firebird. And then we'll go to the Firebird uh, website, click on the downloads, and here we can find the server packages. Click on the server packages and take it. And here we can select the version of the Firebird we want to install. If you want to use a 32 bit server, we should uh, install the Firebird. Uh, 2.5.2 for 32 bit version, and if you want to use it for Windows 64 bit version, we can install 64 bit version. So, whatever the operating system or the machine you have, you can choose the 32 bit version or 64 bit version as per your choice and as per your machine. So, it's pretty easy and it's uh, it's a really small, it's only 6.58 MB. Just double click it, open. wherever you have downloaded the Firebird just double click it and it will start uh, an installer just select the default options choose the directory where you want to install it okay <coughs> oh here you can install a super server binary or a classic server binary or super server binary so we'll, we'll just stick towards the, the default options clicking it so this server can be accessible remotely by only providing the IP of this machine and uh, it's pretty easy to connect after a while you'll see this information click on next and start firewall service now when you click finish the firewall will start now uh, Firebird provides some uh, uh, the command based controls so instead of using fire command based controls and writing for writing commands we can use some front-end administration tools so one of a very uh, very good uh, Firebird administration tool is flame robin so if you click on the flame robin flame robin is the front end uh, there is administration tool for the Firebird and it's also free of cost so click on the download and click on the download fire open the latest version from uh, source for each net and it'll automatically install uh, sorry automatically download it uh, yes here it goes click on the start download and we are good to go with flame Robin's setup. It's just 1.74 MB, so it's pretty uh, small. Just click on next. Accept the agreement. Flame Robin. Yes. Install it, and then lock the Flame Robin. So, this is the Flame Robin. When just click on the local host. Double click on the local host. And if you have previously installed uh, 
firebird or create some databases they'll they'll be shown or if they are they are if they are um, attached with the uh, flame robin so here now let's say let's assume that we don't have any previous database available with us so let's uh, learn how to create a new database so just right click on uh, localhost and click on create new database okay we can give any display name for the database let's say we say it as test database and now it will be asking us for the any path you can select any path let me select uh, C drive and give it a name let's say test database and its extension would be dot fdb click on the open and now we, the database name and the path would be c column backslash just database dot fdb so authentication click on use save use saved username and password and the default username for the firebird is it's sys dba and the password is the default password is master key m a s t e r k e y click on create now just clicking on the create will create a, a new database test database now we want to create new tables or first of all we need to connect to that database just click on the connect and it will be connected now we want to create new table there are already system tables roles defined you can define other roles as the database have but we'll just be now considering to create how can we create new tables so it's pretty easy to create new tables here just right click on create new and it will show us a uh, SQL statement uh, by by a table by writing the SQL statements so we'll just delete all the all the SQL uh, hints that that have been provided just we will just give a simple name for example test t tbl test and we'll just create a single uh, field let's give it a name id and its data its data type is integer and we'll not provide any other details here because we can provide it by uh, using a gui tool so just click on this execute mark like it, it will execute the sql statement and if uh, the statement is, uh, is uh, successful it will show that script execution finished and it's done if there is some problem for example place a semicolon here and when I'll click on the statement it the invalid token or the, and what, whatever the error is the will be shown here so commit it by clicking on the tick mark sign we commit that transaction when we look at the tables now we have DBL table test just double click it by double clicking it will we can now sh see <coughs> uh, GUI based information regarding that table so we can add new fields here we can reorder the fields we can drop the fields means delete the fields so let's you want to edit the field we can click on it, the field and we can do anything for example we want to make it as not now click on ex execute it will ask us for enter value of existing field containing null and if there is any field that contains null and uh, there any value that that is null for this specific field what should be the alternate value so let's skip any value like for example one click ok and then commit the change now you can see it has been changed that the field is ID and the null field is not null we can add another field for example you can say first name and uh, we can select any data type we can select character or where character for uh, first name so we'll <coughs> choose where character we can define the size for example what can should be the maximum size of the first of this uh, the value in this field so let's give it 40 all fields as default click on the execute and you can see that uh, it's done there is no problem when we click on the commit we'll see that now we have first name we can add in the field add field for example last name 
and we also created that rod here and uh, the size will be 40 click on the commit and we can have it here we can add another field for example address right here execute and now you have seen that we can have multiple values we can oh just a minute I think I didn't execute and it's done click on the commit transition and all it's finished there so we have our table here if we click on the table you can find ID first name last name address we like one important aspect of the table here that we don't have any primary key here so double click on the TBL test if you want to add a primary key or multiple click on the constraint and click add primary key so give any constraint name let's let leave it as default pk tbl test underscore one okay so here we need to uh, select any field that we want to make the uh, primary key for example if we just for uh, for a simple demonstration we click on the first name now it there would be an error if you click here now what's the error is that the first name not defined as not null because the primary key can never be null uh, can never be null so we need to choose some value uh, some some field that is not null or we need to edit some the field and tick the not null field so click on the add primary key and now we'll select id as we have already made id as not null so there will be no problems and when we commit change now we already we will have a single primary key. now our id is a primary key so just for a demonstration if you want to insert some data here not from the application just we want to directly input the data here we can write insert into so let's give it a value one the first name can be for example in single quotes Kashif, last name can be Bilal and we can give the address as Forco USA just run the application and now we can see the one row is affected and one insert is made so when we commit the changes the changes would be uh, would be translated to the database so if you want to see what the data we are table currently has we can select we can use the select table query and we can run it or if we, we can also change for example if you want to don't want to see the ID so, so remove that and run it and now we, we, we can just see first name last name and address field so we have seen that it's pretty easy to install the database and uh, the um, uh, the fiber uh, DBMS and uh, to to manage the DBMS to create a database and to create tables. In the next video, we'll look how we can connect to a fiber database using C# or any .NET compliant language.